Okay, on this problem, besides finding the intervals of increasing, decreasing, constant, critical numbers, you want, it's asking us to find all that. They also want the local and the absolute extrema on this one. For these kind of problems, the first thing you want to do is find critical numbers. So critical numbers will involve the first derivative. So that's what we'll do. F prime of t is going to equal 27 and then minus 3t squared. To find a critical number, we look for where the first derivative is undefined. That's one way, but we're not going to find any values here because we have a polynomial again. It's always continuous. Second way is we set this equal to 0. So 0 equals this part right here. We're going to factor that. We can take a 3 out and we get 9 minus t squared left over. And then this can be factored one more time because the difference of squares. So we have th uh, 3 minus t, 3 plus t. Now we're going to set this equal to 0. You can't take 3 and set it equal to 0, so we can ignore that. We'll just take these two and set it equal. When you do, you're going to get t is equal to 3 and negative 3. 3 and negative 3 will be your critical numbers. These are the ones that we're going to put on our number line. And then we know what our test intervals are going to be. Negative 3 and 3. We're going to test numbers in each of these regions. Again, the number you pick doesn't matter as long as it fits in between each of these. A number less than negative 3, we'll use negative 4. So again, I'm putting that underneath down below here so we don't get it confused when we write our answer. This is going to have a 0. And then I have, a, uh, again, any number between negative 3 and 3 is fine. 0 is always an easy one to use. And then I have a 4. These numbers will go into your first derivative function, not the original one. Okay, so we're going to put that into each of these. So if I put negative 4 into there, negative 4 squared is 16. I get 27 minus 48. We already can see there we get a negative result. Next, if I plug 0 into this, I get 27 minus 0. That's positive. And then if I put 4 in here, I'll get the same exact result as I got with negative 4. I'll get a negative value there. So now from this, I can tell automatically what my intervals of increasing and decreasing are going to be. My increasing will start with first. You're looking for any region that has a plus in it. So increasing is going to be between negative 3 and 3. Then we're going to do decreasing. Your decreasing intervals are the ones that have negatives. So these two here, negative infinity, negative 3, and then from 3 to infinity. So any place with negatives has a negative slope, therefore it's decreasing. Next, we want to look for relative mins and relative maxes. Okay, let's do the relative again with local min. Let's do that one first. Okay, min we're looking for if you have decreasing and increasing. So you're looking for negative to positive. So if you see negative to positive, that's using the first derivative test that we talked about earlier. That means that you have a relative local min at negative 3. Now, you want to find the y value that goes with that. So you want to put negative 3 into the original ones. So if you work it out, you're going to get negative 3 and negative 54. And then we're going to look for the local maximum. That's where you have an increasing and a decreasing. So that's going to occur at 3. 3 you'll put into the original function and you're going to get positive 54 as the answer. So now we've got an increase and decrease in local min and local max. Now they're also asking you us for the absolute extrema. Now let's think about what's happening here. It's increasing from negative 3 to 3, but then it's decreasing, it's going down, so we have a down, up, and a down situation. Now, if it's going down from negative infinity down negative 3, that means it's going to continually forever be coming down, which means that technically it's going to be op going up forever and then going down forever here. The graph itself is going to look like this if we wanted to get a picture of it. It's a cube graph, a cube graph that has a negative here in front of the the coefficient with the high, or the t with the highest power, that's negative, which means it's going to be looking like this. It's going to go up forever and then down. We can also see that from our graph 
itself. So because of that, that means it's, there's no absolute max and there's no absolute min. We have relative ones at these two spots here that we've already indicated already, but there's not going to be any absolute extrema on this particular problem.